Hey guys, it's time for us to talk about AI generated art. I'm Becca Hilburn. I'm a comic artist and art educator, and I'm married to Joseph a programmer. So I feel like I might have a unique, unique take on this. I've actually waited to put this out because Joseph has been sick with a cold this week, and I really wanted him to participate in this conversation, and he's still not 100%. It is really cold outside. Y'all need to come get your weather. We did not ask for it. I try not to send my hurricanes to you. Please do not send my your cold weather to me. I lived in Nashville ten, for 10 years and this is why I left. It is the first sunny day outside, so time ain't gonna get better to talk about AI art. I feel like things are changing really, really quickly and um, that's another reason I'd kind of hesitated to say anything was because I wanted to see, since things were changing so rapidly, I kind of wanted to see how things would fall. I'm also going to disclose, if you don't know, I have ADHD. I actually am going to be referencing a Patreon post I wrote last week because I feel like it kind of summed up my thoughts really well. I've been very transparent about this on other platforms. I also hesitated to record a video because I'm horribly depressed. I've got burnout and seasonal affective disorder. I lost a family member this year and it just feels like this year has been a garbage can fire for everyone, particularly artists, particularly the neurodivergent. So I didn't want to record something that was like just off my chest, that wasn't well thought out, that showed I didn't know what I was talking about. Because I feel like with AI generated art, people get very confused. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of like well-meaning artists who don't really understand the technology. There's a lot of AI tech grifter bros who are gonna lie, just lie to you. Like they don't care. They're gonna just lie about what's going on. And a lot of the companies participating in this are very dishonest about what they're doing as well. So it's one of those situations where if you really, really wanna know what's going on, you have to keep up with it nonstop, which is exhausting. This isn't meant to be an all inclusive. Um, I share info regularly on my Twitter for as long as we have Twitter for as long as Elon Musk doesn't just like set us all on fire. By the way, I wanna just disclose, I don't hate tech, not by a long shot. Uh, my first degree was in hypermedia, which is digital art. I do not conflate digital art with AI art, and I hope you don't either. I also, in my comments, which I won't be checking because they're probably going to be a disaster. So if you genuinely wanna talk about this, you can join me on my Discord server, the paint box, which I will link, and I will be <laughs> moderating it heavily for me. Um, I don't want you guys to conflate that uh, digital art equals AI art. It is not. There is no easy button that artists can just push. There are tools that we utilize, and a big part of what makes those tools tools is that the person who created them created them with the intent of them being used by artists. Artists making their art we all know when we go into this artist game, it's like an unspoken agreement. People are going to learn from you. They're going to reference your art. Picasso said that good artists borrow, great artists steal. And while I think he was a dumpster truck fire of a person on a personal level, I do believe that. We all are learning from one another. That's one of the reasons I don't like the phrase self-taught because we're all learning from other people. We're learning from other artists. We're learning from the internet. We're learning from books. We're learning from comics. We're learning from television. It is a communal effort. We're humans helping humans. What AI is doing is it is scraping artists' work without their consent, without their prior knowledge, feeding it into an algorithm, and then when the user on the other end types in a specific prompt set, which this is the big argument that makes them writers. I mean, makes them artists. The closest I would say is it makes them writers, but it doesn't make them artists, and it doesn't necessarily make them creative. They just know what prompts to say, what prompts to use. It's like being good at Google. Um, it, it generates several pieces and then the person who created the prompt selects which piece they want to use or which pieces they want to use. Now, I wanna kinda like get into this since we've kind of prefaced it at four minutes in. So I'm going to kind of explain what AI art is and that was written up by my programmer husband who has a degree in computer science so it's coming from him i'm also going and i wanted him to write as unbiased like 
not, no anger, no defending one side or the other, just as unbiased as possible so that people can understand what it is. I'm also going to go over my, my problems with this and how it's currently being used. I might talk about some potential AI programs that might be helpful to artists. And I'm also going to talk about what we, both as artists and people who love art, can do about this situation. I'm going to touch a little bit because this is changing like literally every day. And this isn't a news channel. It's an art channel. I'm going to touch a little bit on what some sites are doing and what some sites are not doing. But that may be totally different when this video goes live, which will be after Christmas, because I just cannot deal with the dumpster fire that's probably going to ensue if I release it before Christmas. So let's talk about AI generated art. A quick explanation of AI generated art. This is written for me by Joseph. AI generated art utilizes machine learning to produce a novel image based on a model which was trained on existing images with their corresponding captions. The most recent wave of models uses deep neural networks trained on billions of images and captions to morph a diffusion pattern into an image which best match matches a text or image prompt provided to the model. Training a model is very computationally expensive, but using a model is much less so. So basically what that kind of means is you know how there are neural networks that are trained to think like certain animals? This algorithm sort of kind of not really thinks like an artist. It, it doesn't have all of the training or the, the discernment. It's just looking to create images based around the images that it's been fed. So that's why you'll have these kind of models that can create art like Toriyama or other famous comic artists is because it's been fed thousands of comic pages by Toriyama. In fact, there are, I'm not sure if I want to call it sites or if I want to call it programs or software, but there are models in existence that literally you can have it ape your favorite comic artist, which as a comic artist, I think is disgusting because we make no money. How dare you? Another thing, I'm going to try really hard not to curse because I want this to be all ages, but I have feelings about this. I'm an artist and I have feelings about this. So basically what they're doing is they're taking your images. And if you are one of those generous souls who writes alt text for the site impaired, they're, they're using your goodwill against you without your permission to train these models. So what's the problem? And this was written by me, not by Joseph. That's the only part Joseph has contributed. Although we have had several debates about this, he's really helped me like hone my argument and refine my thoughts, which I really appreciate because I know that we are not going to make any strides against people who are already very into this and they think this is totally cool and they have no problem stealing from people and they call us gatekeepers, which we'll get into in a minute. This is for people who don't know. This is for your average person who isn't an artist and isn't into tech. This is for the good hearted CS and tech people who genuinely champion creativity and originality. And they may not realize how this is impacting us because they're just not terminally online. This is for teenagers who have been like dabbling with some of these programs, but they genuinely love art and would like to become artists. This is for people using the AI manga filter on TikTok as it scans your face and potentially record your information while using one of those AI models to crank out some anime garbage that was fed on thousands of probably pics of users. So this is for like the people who just don't know and would like to do better. So what's the problem? The art pieces these models were trained on were obtained without consent or permission from the original creator, the artist. They did not ask, they just went and took. Now, as time progresses, they may ask. In fact, a lot of us are pushing for those kind of models to be the new normal. But the original models and the majority, if not all of the models in use, let me know in Discord if I'm wrong about this, they don't ask, they just do. They were also not trained on the creator's art because the creators are not artists. Some sites allow this to happen, but are not clear with their artist users that this is allowed and did not notify them properly when this change occurred. DeviantArt got in a lot of trouble for this. ArtStation's in a lot of trouble for this. Some sites are trying to rectify this issue by making AI scraping an opt out. That means it's up to the artist to say, hey, no, don't do this. And they have to do that for every piece of theirs. 
an opt-out option on the artist's part, hence the no AI tag, but many artists feel it should be opt-in, as in you give your permission for them to use it before they ever get to use it, opt out, not just opt out. And some of us also feel that we should be able to decide like to pull pieces and they should be removed from the model and not use that for their points. When this issue is pointed out, nothing is done by the AI's creators to remedy the situation or remove the pieces. In fact, several are hostile and we're actually seeing new models pop up that are specifically scraping, um, what's it called, fans only, porn sites, and they're also scraping copyrighted works for their models. So they're, they're getting even more aggro here. They don't care. No compensation for the artist whose work is being used without their consent, nor have any of these modeling companies put forth any public offers for compensation or collaboration in the future. This was at the time that I wrote this post. This is subject to changing, and I hope it does change. Many artists, especially those new to the industry or currently looking for work, fear that this will cost them jobs, these entry-level learning jobs, these apprenticeship, apprenticeship jobs, these cut-your-teeth the, jobs. Yes, they're low-paying jobs, but they're the ones that people need for their portfolios. Otherwise, you become like me and you never progress. As many employers would prefer to hire the cheapest rather than someone competent. Some of the people utilizing AI to generate art are claiming that they are the artists, that they made this in entirety when all they contributed were the written prompts. So think like a Google search. We are already seeing this in artist alleys. There is already some outcry about this. And I'm not going to get into like fan art and fandom and that in this video. I have complicated feelings about that. But like, let's just suffice to say that when it's a, a human drawing fan art with their hands, whether it's on a computer or a piece of paper, that's time and labor and energy and intelligence that has to go into it. When it's an AI and you just select which one you like and you hit the print button, that's like a different category altogether. There are accusations that artists who have problems with the above issues are gatekeeping art and are ableist, including artists who regularly share resources and tutorials. My favorite one, my absolute favorite one, like I haven't been out here for the past 15 years teaching and sharing tutorials and writing stuff up and basically being as transparent as possible. And you think I'm alone? I'm inspired by thousands of other artists who do the same. So that is just so, so peak garbage. Many of these companies hide behind the law. That's what they're claiming at least currently because there isn't a lot written about it. Sorry, it's very cold out here. There isn't a lot written about it. Um, there are artists and artist groups that are working to change that. I'm hoping that it'll end up I feel like it's going to be like right to repair where we're we're not really fighting against public goodwill we're fighting against corrupt politicians and lobbyists so all in all it's a mess with a lot of bad takes and a lot of bad choices also um if you you don't have to subscribe to my patreon but i have a free patreon newsletter where i actually have a lot of links that's where i'm reading this from because adhd brain i don't want to mess up or stagger or stumble or say the wrong thing too too much i've spent a lot of time writing this so i just wanted to share it in a video form so it's easier for people who maybe don't want to read a blog post for whatever reason it might be easier for them so i also include a lot of links in there that explain things they collate a lot of other resources i'm going to link that down in the description below so please do check that and um yeah there's more on there because i have a thread on why the hashtag no a art tag alone won't work on DeviantArt and ArtStation that also explains how AI art genera generators are explained with a graphic that I think is really helpful in understanding it. I may try to, it's not mine, I didn't create it, so I don't want to take credit for it. I'd rather direct you to the source. That's why I'm not going to actually show it here. Um, I have kind of hinky feelings about YouTubers who just grab whatever to prove their point. That's why I don't do that. So um, yeah, please do check the description and check out that thread. I thought it was really cool. So what's my stance as a comic artist, educator, illustrator on AI generated art? In a different world with different standards and protocols with artists consent from the get go and protection and compensation for artists, I might feel differently about AI generated art. But as it stands, I say no to AI generated art. 
As a comic artist and a teaching artist, I have worked my entire professional career and most of my student career to try to make learning art and developing art skills more accessible to those who wish to pursue it, despite ability, despite income level. I work with underprivileged schools, I work with libraries, and I share stuff online for free to try and remedy that and to try to work towards those goals. I don't want money or access to be your reason why you can't make art. I also do a lot of videos that show how to use cheap, inexpensive art supplies. And one of the things I love about comics is you literally just need some copy paper and a pencil or any drawing tool and you can start making comics. I have volunteered, student taught, created free resources, donated art supplies, and I even run a small art scholarship, the Natto Scholarship. If you genu genuinely want to learn how to draw, paint, play, sculpt, sew, I want to help support and encourage that time and dedication required to do so. No matter how many other artists work I study and learn from, my own physical abilities, muscle memory, taste, and even life experiences will color my work and make it individualized. Taste and personality give each sentient artist work individuality. I say sentient because even animals are capable of creating art. Elephants are capable of painting representations of elephants. AI is not capable of utilizing its own taste or discretion to create art. And while humans are putting in prompts and inputs into the algorithm and using their own tastes to select which images to share, in the end, the artists whose work went into the algorithm were not given the chance to consent or deny consent. And until AI art is opt-in and opt-out at an artist's whim and will, I do not feel it is ethical to artists. I have no problem with other artists using my art to learn or for inspiration, nor do I have any issues with other artists utilizing my bases, templates, or tutorials. I do not give consent for it to be used in a style set, and I teach, off and I teach offline and online. I'm always happy to help other artists willing to invest the time, but I am not willing to continue to be used against my will. Although it's often disheartening and difficult, I will continue to share resources and tutorials for learning artists and those who wish to begin their artistic journey for as long as I possibly can. I request employers at all sizes to consider my points when selecting who to hire for projects. While I believe there is a possibility for ethically created AI generated images, I do not feel the current modes, particularly those that are popular and accessible, are using those methods, pursuing consent first, or making it easy to adopt, sorry, or making it easy to opt out of their style set. And thus, they are not ethical. So on, on that post, I also talk about what's going on on ArtStation. I'm gonna touch on that a little bit here. So ArtStation is a portfolio website that a lot of artists use to share their art and to find work. I have an ArtStation, I have plugged it. ArtStation has taken a very, very weak stance on AI-generated art, and they are not taking a stance to genuinely protect the artists who are using ArtStation. They've basically introduced a tag that, as I explained earlier, and if you read the thread that I talk about in the blog post, you can work around that very easily. No ethical, no, anyone who's already participating in scraping art unethically is going to give a care about the no AI, art, no AI tag. They're going to ignore that. They don't have to, that it's not stopping them. There's no protections there. So in that post, I also link an article from Vice. I link some arguments against AI generated art besides the one that I've presented here. And I also link an example of how this is problematic and painful for the artists whose work are used on to train those algorithms written by an artist who found their work being used in such a way. And I really think you should check that thread out because it broke my heart to see it. So what can we do? For the time being, we can support legislation that enforces and protects our work. We can educate ourselves on what's currently going on. We can speak out against AI art being passed off as the work of the person who just wrote those prompts. We can put pressure on social media sites and portfolio sites to enact measures that will protect artists from scraping. We can ourselves not use AI generators 
And I would argue that those include the ones on TikTok by Tencent, which are very, very popular right now. Until standards have been set, stolen art has been removed, algorithms have been reworked and retrained, and we have set some guidelines for how human artists will be compensated for their work. And most importantly, the number one takeaway is we can support human artists. And that means we can support our peers by signal boosting their work, by buying their work, by giving their work as gifts to people who might enjoy it, by filling out library request forms at libraries. We can request if they're a teacher that they come teach at our local library or create a presentation. We can um, not steal their work, not when you, uh, post somebody else's comic without or art without asking them and you just say credit to artists like that's not supporting human artists and I say this although this is something I am currently struggling with we can try to continue to be visible to be seen to share our art and to educate other people so briefly I want to get a little bit personal here and touch on how this is affecting me as an artist do I think my art is going to be scraped Probably not, <laughs> like realistically, that's not really something I have to worry about. And I have been funder employed for most of my working life as has most of my artist friends. So the jobs it's going to cost would probably not be offered to me anyway. That said, it's incredibly discouraging to wake up and see on Twitter that there's a new model that's intentionally scraping copyright art and they have no problem doing this and I am genuinely afraid that these grifters are going to continue to ruin the industry. I'm not a fine artist. I don't even like fine art. I want art to be for everyone. I want people to be able to afford my art. I want people who think they cannot draw to try watercolor. I want to make art as egalitarian as possible. And one of the arguments is that these models are making art more egalitarian, but you are missing the forest for the trees. I love drawing. I love painting. I love how the paint looks on the paper. It is calming for me. It is meditative for me. It helps me get in touch with my soul and it helps me communicate theoretically things I want to communicate with other people. The very best parts of my spirit are the things that I put into my art and my illustration, which is why it can be very discouraging when they don't get very much engagement. But AI art doesn't do any of those things for the person who's putting in the prompt. It isn't meditative. It isn't necessarily helping you explore yourself. You are not necessarily honing and practicing skills. You don't necessarily get the joy of trying something and seeing if it works. And it's no risk, no reward. There is no skin in the game. You are typing a prompt. If you can Google, you can type a prompt. So it's just incredibly discouraging and it makes me not want to share my art online and it happened at a terrible time of year because we're all suffering from seasonal affective disorder and i just don't have a lot of energy for this and losing a close family member and then dealing with this has just been incredibly depressing and rough and i'm having a really hard time i don't want to draw i don't want to paint i don't want to make art Bowie. He want Joseph brought him out. He wants to go inside because it's cold. So if you care, if this is important to you, if the things I said touched your heart, um, it would really mean a lot to me if you took some advice from my what we can do section. And it would also just really mean a lot to me if you did your best to stay on top of the situation to the best of your ability. I am not an expert on this. I think to be blunt, very few of us artists can be experts on this because this is changing so quickly. You have to have a degree in computer science and be terminally online and very invested in this to really understand what's going on at all times. So that means the people who have chosen to dedicate themselves to being on top of this are giving up a lot of their time and resources to educating and helping other people stay on top of this. So I... I'm debating whether I want to link them in the description because I don't want to bring heat on them because I 
am I was a little worried about recording this because I don't want to bring heat upon myself from people who are pro AI art, AI art for whatever reason they, they might be. So on that note, I do want to like briefly touch on some, I've given this a lot of thought. That's why I, one of the reasons I've hesitated from posting this is I've been thinking about this a lot. And um, I do think there are some art ideas for art algorithms that I would be excited about and that I think could do some genuine good and I think that other artists would be happy about. So an AI tool that analyzes the great masters are dead artists who are not under copyright art and suggests with thumbnail sketches using stick figures, not fully rendered out, not copying anyone's art style, suggests popular compositions that fit a certain mood or certain theme. So you type in the mood, you type in the theme like dark bucolic, and it comes up with a thumbnail sketch that you can work from. An AI that does similar, but with lighting, analyzing public domain movies, public domain works of art. So everything has to be either submitted by the creator or public domain. Um, and I think there's actually a musical AI generator that only is working with uh, copyright free and public domain music. So that was kind of the inspiration behind that. I think, I think it can be done. Um, those are the top two that come off the top of my head, but I feel like so many artists would really hail that. So what's the problem? You're not going to make any money from that. <laughs> we don't have any money to give you. I had a friend who used to make wonderful Photoshop brushes, gave them away for free and had a Patreon to support it and saw very little support for that because spoiler, artists don't have money to support other artists. But if you were like genuinely, I want to use tech to help the world, that could be a way to do it. There's a lot of ways. Like I said, my husband's a programmer. There's lots of ways you can use tech to genuinely help the world scraping artist art without their consent and then selling access to your model so that other people can use these data sets and print it out and pass it off as their own ain't it chief so those are my thoughts for the time being on ai art um i hope i'm sure it probably wasn't like the world's most informative there are a lot of people a lot of people talking about ai art i don't want to pretend like i'm an expert because I'm not I'm just an artist with skin in the game who's married to a programmer so I know a little but I don't know everything so I heavily encourage you to do your own research to seek out Google things if you don't know ask artists how they feel about it and I want to touch on like a couple other things before I say goodbye um, one of which is I don't want this conversation to become ableist and I'm actually seeing a lot of artists making it kind of ableist. They're making it about skill. They're making it about time. And while I have a lot of time and skill sunk into this, I think that's an unfair argument. It's a cruel argument. Um, disabled people are able to make art. Art is useful in therapy. Young, young, young children are making art. Art is for everyone. That's why I said earlier that even animals make art. Elephants can create representations of themselves. I don't want to gatekeep the creation of art. Do I currently think AI can make art? No, because art is the creation of a sentient creature whose tastes and interests and life experience all come into play. And an AI has none of those things. If we ever live in AI, the Somnium Files, and Iba wants to make art, I would champion Iba making art because Iba is sentient or data from TNG, but we're not there. That's not what's going on. These AI are not truly sentient and they are stealing from sentient creatures to make a mockery of what sentient creatures do to steal future earning opportunities from said sentient creatures and to further muddle and confuse a market that is already very challenging. If we're talking about like anime cons, that's already very challenging to work in as someone who did them for 10 years. So that's, that's how I feel about that. You know, when AI is truly sentient, I will happily revisit it because they'll hopefully that kind of AI sentience would be bringing in something we, a, a worldview we can't even comprehend because they'll have a totally different way of thinking about the world and that would be exciting. But this isn't about a way of thinking about the world. 
Um, another argument I have seen personally in my comments is, well, if you work in traditional art, you don't have to worry about it. It's not coming for you. The value of the piece you make will always be that inherent value. And I'd like to shut you down right there, Chief, because if we start eating our digital art brothers and sister, we've lost. Our only way of succeeding in this is solidarity. And like, I ain't here to gatekeep that, all right? Hypermedia, y'all. I might use watercolor, but I do my sketching digitally. There is no push button, make art. Not in Clip, not in Procreate, not in Photoshop. Like there just isn't. There are tools like Symmetry. There are bases that you can use that were created by other artists with the express intention of being used. Even in the manga industry, you can buy tone sheets that have backgrounds on them. Those are tools made by humans to help other humans. I'm not here to gatekeep. We're not doing that argument. The only way we're gonna succeed is if we have each other's backs. Fine artists, comic artists, illustrators, naive artists, crafters, we all have to have each other's backs on this one and support each other. Because if we start being like, yeah, but at least we're not like so-and-so, they're coming for us next. How do you guys not, how do y'all not see that? As a neurodivergent person, I know how this game goes, okay? You're only good until you're next on the list. So if we start eating each other, you're going to be on that list eventually. They are going to gun for you eventually. So that's basically like, I'm not mad mad, but like we have to band together. We can't eat each other on this. So I do think there is the potential for ethical AI generated tools. I do think there is the potential for AI generated pieces of work to be used ethically in concept work, ethically in children's book illustration. Do I think our current models are doing that? Absolutely not. One more thing, not throwing anybody under the bus, but concept artists often kit bash photos, this, that, and another thing, other people's art into an amalgamation to create an idea of what they're looking for. It's basically a thumbnail. And some people are trying to say that AI generated art is the same thing. Again, no, my bro, because that is still taste, experience, discretion. They are pulling from their experiences and they're kit bashing this into a whole just editing Becca here. So I think my point with that is uh, one of my big problems is people are passing AI generated works off as the finished piece. And I have no problem with them being used as part of the conceptualization of the piece that's going to be further edited and refined into something else. But my problem is when you are po passing like the AI generated thing with no real modifications, no real you put into that, however that is, um, passing that off as the finished piece, that's when my problems start to arise. So like concept art is not meant to be the whole of the finished piece. The whole of the finished piece is the animation or the comic or whatever, the game, the end piece, it's just a part of the piece. It's kind of like my thumbnails are not really the finished piece, they're just part of the piece. So if you're using AI to help you in the creation, but it isn't the sum of the whole parts, I don't have a problem with that. Just to get an idea across, when you're typing a prompt in, there is no way you can bring your life experience into that one little prompt. So one more time for the folks in the back, solidarity. We have to have solidarity. We have to have each other's backs. We cannot be eating each other alive on this. There cannot be, well, you don't deserve to have a voice because your art isn't good enough. You don't deserve to have a voice because you haven't been doing it 20 years. You don't deserve to have a voice because you're a knitter. Like, no, we have to, we have to welcome every ally in this fight that we have. Because like I said, once we start eating each other alive, we're doing their job for them. So yeah, sorry, I do, I feel very strongly about this. I feel really passionate about solidarity. I used to be a cosplayer. I used to crochet, I used to embroider. I was a printmaker for a while. I love a variety of arts and crafts forms. And I think we should have respect for one another and not start tearing each other down based on really arbitrary distinctions of like what we personally think is good enough or not. And my, my like bottom boiling line is sentience. On that note, Shadow the Rat, a YouTuber who has all these adorable pet rats, her pet rats make paintings and they always seem so delighted by their paintings. I would even say that those rats are making art, but I would not say that an AI is making art because those little ratoms are choosing where to put their feet. And if it brings them joy and if it brings them delight, 
that is what art should be doing. It's supposed to be an emotive experience for us. And currently those AI can do not have emotions. They do not have feelings. They are not sentience. So for me, that's one of the gatekeep lines is sentience. You got sen sentience, you can make art. No sentience, sorry, y'all, that ain't art. We gotta like think about and define what art is so that we can actually talk about this with legislators and lawmakers and uh, just our family members around the dinner table. So I hope, I hope this was helpful, useful and inspiring for you guys. Um, let's have each other's back. Let's support human artists and let's have some solidarity. Bye! Oh, my hands are so cold.